Welcome to Mind Boggles. Oh, glad you're back. Hope you've enjoyed some of the shows we've had before. Today we're going to talk about the Hindu Bhagavad Gita, sometimes it's called the Gita. Now I've talked about Buddhism, Hinduism, other types of teachings. Why do we do that? Well, uh, the world's getting smaller, is it not? Now we have Google. We have all kinds of ways to track other religions and other teachings and other pieces of wisdom. And I thought some of you right now might have an interest in say, well, who are these, who is the Hindus? What do they have going on here? You call tech support, you wind up talking to someone in India, don't you? It's nice to understand our, our backgrounds. So one of the uh, strategies here is to understand more about people as the world gets smaller. And the Hindu teachings is a, a wonderful study. And if you understand the Bhagavad Gita, you have a pretty good idea of what the Hindu folks are about. Anyway. Uh, the story goes back 2,500 years or longer, depends. I need to, to, to start again with the idea of all religions have an orthodox group within them that, that considers their religion historically valid. Others say, well, it may not be historically valid, but the teachings or the metaphor is useful. I'm going to approach this with the idea that this is an historically accurate uh, story, but I'll try my best to tell the story as cleanly as I can. I apologize to the Hindu community if I louse this up, but I'll do it from the best of my ability. Okay? So, with that disclaimer, let me say that uh, uh, the oldest book, and probably the biggest book ever written, is called the Mahabharata. It's the story of the great Bharata family. Maha meaning great, like Mahatma Gandhi, the great soul, the great Gandhi. Maha Bharata, the story of the great family of the Bharata brothers, for the four brothers. Now, going back, you know, kind of in the Old Testament times, or maybe even earlier, uh, it's said that the four brothers ruled India. And the oldest brother, of course, was the king, because he's the oldest brother. Well, uh, Duryodhana is kind of the bad guy in this scene. <clears throat> and Duryodhana realizes, you know, the oldest brother, the king, is a sucker for dice. So, uh, he rigs a dice game so that the king, the oldest Bharata brother, he loses India in, in a dice game. Well, uh, some time goes by and uh, he finds out that the game was rigged. Well, during this period of time, there is a fellow named Krishna, who is like an incarnation of Christ or God, who is incarnated. And he's blue in color. For, I'm not sure why, but he's blue. Uh, and one of the things that Krishna does, it's too tough to hang around God. So he dulls everybody's vision, so it's just, it's just too blinding to be around God. So he dulls their vision so he can just kind of hang out with people. Well, uh, everyone realizes Krishna is God, and they ask for mediation. So uh, Krishna is going to mediate between Duryodhana and the Bharata family. And they talk about the problem and how the game was rigged. And Krishna says, here's the deal. Uh, you Bharata brothers and your families will have to go into hiding for 12 years. And if you, Duryodhana, if you can't find them, they get India back. Right? They all agree, that's the deal. And off the Bharata family goes into hiding and all kinds of stories go on. And the Mahabharata continues with all these stories and adventures. Well, uh, after 12 years, they, they come back to the palace grounds and say, Ha! Couldn't find us. Give us India back. Yeah. And Duryodhana Adonis says, Tough. I'm keeping it. What? <laughs> How could, you can't do that? Uh, but he does. So once again, they appeal to Krishna. And Krishna says, Well, I guess here's the deal. What, there's going to be a civil war, I guess. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, and one of the brothers is a fellow named Arjuna, and he's one of the greatest warriors ever. And it turns out Arjuna and Krishna are friends. Right? So during this second mediation, uh, Krishna says to both sides, uh, one of you will have all the warriors you want, but not me. The other one will get me, but I will not fight. And Duryodhana says, great, I'll take the warriors. And Arjuna says, perfect, because all I want is you, Krishna. Right. So, 
They decide how it's going to be done. <clears throat> they will fight in the, battle of, uh, the, the battleground of Karasutra, and off they go to prepare for war. Months go by, and soon there's a million people gathered at the, at the battlefield of Karasutra with elephants and boiling oil and all kinds of things. They're ready to do battle. And Arjuna says, uh, uh, Sri Krishna, would you drive the chariot for me into battle? Krishna says, yes, I will drive the chariot, but I will not fight. No, that's okay. I don't want you to fight, but drive the chariot. Fine. So they're about to start the battle, and, and Arjuna says, uh, Krishna, drive out to the center of the battlefield so I can see all my friends and family one more time. So they drive out into the battlefield, and Arjuna looks around. He sees cousins on both sides, uncles, friends on either side. And he starts to realize, holy cow, I am going to see all of my friends and family die because I want India back? This is, I can't do this. And he see, the more they go out there, the more people he recognize on either, either side of the battle. And finally he says, uh, uh, Krishna, I, I, I can't do this. I, I will not fight. I will not fight. About that time, Krishna turns around and essentially says, Sarjuna, don't be silly, nobody dies. Right? That's where the Bhagavad Gita begins. The Gita now is Krishna's reply to Arjuna, his advice on the battlefield of Karasutra, where we have, in the Christian tradition, we have Jesus' descriptions, the Sermon on the Mount in a peaceful valley, and Arjuna now is about to hear the teachings of Krishna before the beginning of a great civil war. Right, so that's the setting. And it's said that everybody on the battlefield, the millions of people there, heard the teachings of Krishna. So first of all, Krishna says, Arjuna, you're a Kshatriya warrior. You were born to fight the righteous war. This is a righteous war. Fight. Uh, and Arjuna says, no, I, I need more than that. You know, give me more. I'm going to shorten the teachings here for you because we only have a few minutes. But he says, essentially, uh, there are four paths here to focus on. One is devotion. Devote everything to me. Give everything to me, Arjuna. No one is dying. It's all me playing all the parts. You only think that you're Arjuna. It's only me. Devote your, your, your everything to me, and you'll become one with me. So this bhakta path of devotion is like Christianity is essentially is a bhakta path of devotion, yes? Yeah. But India says, well, not everybody's cut out to be devoted. They just don't, it's not their thing. A second path is work. Do your work. Do your duty. Do your work. And here it is, your work like Mother Teresa in India, you know, in the current times, giving everything she can, all of her energy as, as work to God. Right? Uh, others are the third path of study. You study all the teachings in all the religions. You study philosophy, you study Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism. You squeeze out the, the real truth of all of it. That'd be the path of knowledge, the scholar. What are the teachings? Right? The fourth path would be the path of science, the science of deep meditation and higher states of consciousness. That would be Raja Yoga, the science of deep meditation. Those four paths will reveal my true nature, our true nature, your predicament in the world, and the world itself. At that point in time, Arjuna, you will start to notice and finally realize you were never born and you will never die. It's only God playing all the parts in disguise. Yeah. With that higher teaching, Arjuna says, now I understand. Now I will fight. <laughs> and then the battle begins for the Civil War and the fight for India. And that's the story of the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, that's, that's a piece of the whole thing, how it fits together. But you get a sense of the teachings of 
the four paths to spiritual enlightenment, devotion, work, study, science. Yeah? Those are the four ways to become enlightened or to see how it is in our experience. Yeah? And then we start practicing compassion. We start practicing wisdom to become one with the unspeakable. Yeah? Neat, huh? That's the story of Arjuna and Krishna on the battlefield of Karasutra, referred to as the Bhagavad Gita in the Hindu teachings. You know? uh, behind all this, if we could look at religion from a, a higher view, because I do teach religion, I've t mentioned that in, 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 on the show before, uh, I teach comparative religion at a university in Tampa. All religions are true, and none of them are literal. Well, if we take that perspective, we now look at the, the battlefield of Karasutra and realize it doesn't matter if it's historical or not. The battlefield of Karasutra is here. It's a civil war in myself between the higher teachings and the ego, the lower, uh, the dark side. <laughs> so we realize the battle of Karasutra is being fought continually here and here within myself. And now the teachings have some, some usefulness. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the idea of the Hindu Gita and hope it's a mind boggler for you. And we'll stir some things up so you can realize, hmm, how can I do battle you know, with the dark side in my life and to rise above that? Well, one of the things you can do, of course, is take care of yourself today and see if you can go out of your way to do something good for somebody else today. Until next time, Thanks a lot. See you later.